check. Yeah, I just thought about it. Like I could have just disabled your green screen. Like I could have just turned it off. That's okay. It's a network error. Please try again. Test, test, audacity. Yep, that works. So close. All right, we've got an audio check for Twitch. Testing now. Yep, and that works. Cool. We're good. <clears throat> okay, ready? Yep. We live. You're live. Oh, I forgot what episode. <laughs> I feel like we start every time with <laughs> crap. I forgot what episode. Okay, two fifty five. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. Three, two, one. Hello everyone. Welcome to episode two fifty five. The security podcast here on the In30 Network. My name is Haim. Tom is actually beneath me. Well, um, I'm looking at him He's beneath me. Yeah. But anyway, the funny thing is right before we start, I was wearing a green shirt that matched with the green screen. So we were debating on whether I should just be literally a talking head <laughs> as I was sitting there with the mic there. However, <laughs> I'm not. And I'm actually annoyed because my headphones have that gap. So when I'm using Microsoft Teams, which... I don't know, whatever you want to say about Microsoft Teams, I'm sorry if you have to use it. I can articulate literally every single problem Microsoft Teams has. <sighs> and they're just playing catch up. It's maybe for your organization, it's good. But if you're a teacher, it is terrible. But anyway, so yeah, the green screen shows that little green part and it can't, it can't redo it. So you know, I'm sitting at a green screen. So I have to figure out how to adjust these. But what I can do, I can buy my $549 pair of Apple AirPods Pro Extreme Studio HD with more courage and no headphone jack. You know, I saw those things and I don't want to hate on it before I try it, but these were a couple hundred bucks cheaper and they're bows like they're not off brand and they've worked great for the past like three years or something uh so i'm not sure why you'd buy the apple version over the bose version but i don't know i guess we'll find and out bag, and the bag the strap that it comes with that was is... so weird like i i don't need a headphone purse that's odd to me i mean the I mean, bows came with a carrying phone. case but like I don't I don't know. Like what happens if it holds like tac like it's tactical, like it has Velcro <laughs> on the outside. It could hold your phone. Maybe that works, but I feel like I don't I mean even my wife doesn't carry around five hundred dollar bags. Yeah. I mean their outlet store are five hundred dollar bags, but they're still <laughs> anyway. So we, we saw that. But anyway, uh, let's get started. It is after Thanksgiving. We all had our turkey. We were all socially distant. It was kind of miserable. I hope, I was hearing about this all over that break, you started your own tradition. I'm not saying to get rid of the turkey or anything else, but maybe you eat, maybe you eat dessert first. Maybe you do nothing. Maybe it's just Thursday. Like, I don't know. I don't know what you want to do. But it's we still had turkey, but I was like, you know what? We should start a new tradition. Maybe this is the right time to do it. And I don't know. Maybe Thanksgiving on Friday and you leave Thursday to not deal with crazy people. But I uh, I broke a Thanksgiving tradition, actually. Um, I usually, I, I try not to do any Black Friday shopping whatsoever because I think it's ridiculous. Like people lining up after dinner on Thanksgiving to get $3 off of a pack of peanuts like I don't, I don't know i don't go shopping um but i try not to buy anything on black friday because i don't want to i don't want to be that guy i don't want to like throw my money into that that horrible pit of despair that is black friday shopping but i i couldn't i i bought a chair 
it's a nice chair. I like it. I like it. It's great. Um, you it's a, it online. yeah, I bought it online. Like I didn't go anywhere. No, I mean, I'm not going to leave this house. Are you crazy? Um, but, uh, yeah, I did, I did buy a, a gaming chair and I gotta say it's, it's comfy. It's nice. It's snug. I mean, it's comfy. It works great. It's got way too many dials that no normal human has ever needed in the history of, of chairs, but man, it's nice. So my a friend of mine goes, I need a new TV. And I'm like, okay, TVs are stupid cheap. I mean, whatever you want, like, just tell me what you want. And it's probably under 500 bucks. And so, and she goes, well, wh and she, what do you recommend? And I said, well, I'm kind of looking for a TV. Um, she goes, she goes, okay, buy two of them. One for you, one for me. I'm like, uh, okay. I don't, my wife's never going to let me get a TV because there's nothing really wrong with our TV and you really don't watch TV. I, I, I literally don't watch TV. It's when you watch a show, it, the auto brightness doesn't work. So it gets really dim and then really bright. And you know what? After seven years, I'm like, you know what? For 300 bucks, I can get that TCL Roku TV and I'm done. But she couldn't handle it because she wanted the normal remote. So Samsung 55 inch. And she's like, 55 inch? I want a 32 inch. Okay, you buy your 55 inch, give me the 30, the 40 inch version. I'm like, okay. So I did go, I did have to do pickup at Best Buy. So I did have to go. Uh, there was some issue and I had to go in. And there was like a line. And I'm like, what are you people doing? Like, like, yes, a lot of people, it was very, it was empty, but I'm just thinking, I didn't look at any Black Friday deals because I figured it's been Black Friday every day. Like really, I, I don't. I'm not going to the store. The deals have been going on all all summer. I, I really don't need much, and like I just forgot about it. Cy same with Cyber Monday. So anyway, yeah, we we ended up buying a whole lot uh, this week actually because we're rearranging furniture in the apartment. We're not moving. We're not going anywhere, and everything is kind of looking a little samey like literally we've been locked in here for nine months it's <laughs> we're we're looking at the walls and like wow i can see it even getting drier right now um and uh we we bought a bunch of a bunch of stuff to rearrange furniture and set up new rooms and and stuff like that so it's been kind of an adventure here locally i'm i'm lucky i have this green screen up it's it's better than it was a couple days ago, but man, there is stuff spread out all over the place. It is generally a train wreck in here. So uh, you're welcome. There's a little inside baseball into the world of Tom. We, 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 we did the, we put, we put paint on our basement. So we rearranged it. It feels a lot better. If you haven't done the home renovation thing yet, um, I, I, I thought the summer was the time to do it, but you know what? Now it gets dark at four 30. Now you have to plan uh, that it's going to get dark at four 30. So you got to get everything done before that. And then you go into the evening and I don't know what you do in the evening, but that that's the time to start getting stuff done and home renovation learning. Like an, we, we kept on talking about this, a new hobby type thing is actually a really good thing. So maybe you buy yourself a whole bunch of puzzles for the holidays and go from there. But we're almost seven minutes. We're seven minutes into the show. Let's first start. Uh, let's first start talking about YouTube DL. We have an update. Basically, I think GitHub through or Microsoft owns GitHub, and Microsoft and Microsoft issued a statement like, "Oops, that was our bad. Um, we shouldn't have done that. That was not right." And moving forward, basically, we're we're gonna alert the developer to the problem before we just randomly shut down things, which seemed like I guess. I thought the best possible solution there was. We're going to reform our ways. I'm sure not everyone's happy, but for the most part, I think that's right. We can also thank the uh, the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, because they they gave Microsoft some, you know, uh, it basically a brief saying, "Hey, here's our arguments against YouTube DL. Here's why we think those are bogus, and you should probably reinstate it. And by the way, if you encounter any issues," We're here with this fund and this pack of lawyers, and we're going to help you take these guys on. Uh, and GitHub and Microsoft said, cool, awesome. YouTube DL is back. It's on GitHub. I literally just downloaded an update for it uh, about 20 minutes ago. Uh, so we can pull down the show afterwards. And uh, yeah, everybody's happy. So, I mean, the uh, like RIAA I said, isn't happy, but we don't really care about their happiness. 
No. Uh, I mean, I mean, I, I, I do like small companies like Comcast and Walmart and everything else, but the RIA falls into my big company status. So exactly, it's, exactly. It's I don't want to hurt Walmart. I mean, disclosure, I own stock in Walmart, but uh, you know what? It's it's I use it. There's so many other uses for this and and to go after the person allowing you to download this to show in class and to do a whole bunch, like you said, what the EFF said, hey, these are the uses. You're not going to go after somebody on the 1% chance that they're going to do anything bad. It's the pencil theory. You can hurt someone with a pencil, therefore we should ban pencils. But anyway, so, so I'm I'm gonna put you on the spot. I think if you yeah. wanted to show this in class and use YouTube DL to grab our entire library of shows on the N30 network, I'm fine with that. You fine with that? Well, we, we I am. We put under Creative Commons, so yeah. you can. We we, we really don't you, care. You are legally I'm allowed never... to take this, remix it, and uh, spread it everywhere. So I've heard people get CLE credits for our course. So for watching oh, us, I, okay. so That's great. I mean, do what, you, do what you want with it, but yeah, take it down off YouTube. I mean, you're going to ask us, I mean, we'll just give it to you, but yeah, we don't really care. So yes, it's, it's good that, that GitHub and Microsoft, they actually listen to the EFF. Usually the EFF I, it was ready to go in guns blazing and Microsoft and GitHub's like, oh, you make really valid points. It's almost like you didn't have a political spin. You were just giving us facts. And all we had to do is listen to facts and present these facts and magic happens. Like, wait, you're not actively out to... Well, no, the EFF does have their political motivations, but it's mainly for a free internet. And uh, if you have any money left in whatever this Giving Tuesday nonsense is. So after, you know what Giving Tuesday is? Tom. I don't. Apparently, I did that, though, because on Tuesday, I did donate a bunch of money to uh, Wikipedia and the EFF. So like I do every year around around the holiday time is I see, OK, what's my donation budget? Cool. Cut that right in the middle. Wikipedia, EFF. Done. They both provide extreme good to the world. The EFF helps keep the Internet free and Wikipedia is possibly the best thing the Internet has ever created in the history of humanity. Like it's truly a marvel uh so yeah they deserve die. they deserve money i will die on the hill that wikipedia is while not an encyclopedia this definition is to be the most ver. it's supposed to be a verifiable information but i will go and say that they are more reliable than any other encyclopedia known to man and if you magically get the one time that it was that it was uh uh defaced okay it things like that happen but mm. For the most part. But anyway, so you have Thanksgiving Thursday. We get that. Then you have Black Friday. Then you have Shop Local Saturday. Then I guess you go to church on Sunday. And then you have Cyber Monday. And then it's Giving Tuesday. So the charities get nothing because you spent all your money. And they're like, whatever else you have left, give to us on Tuesday. So that's where Giving Tuesday comes from. Um, I, too, I think... I always get the gym. So Jimmy Wales did something interesting. He They remember your donation from last year and they're like, hey, uh, but they did that to me in October. Like they did it really early on. And then they did it to me again. Like, so I, would you like to give 20% more? It's only like 20 more cents. I'm like, sure, whatever. Uh, okay. Can you cover the credit card fee? That's another 10 cents. So I, I yep. instead of giving the $2 for the coffee, you end up giving like five or six bucks and they're happy. And, uh, then I get another one. I get Jimmy Wells, like you said, today, can you give more? I did not, but um, I usually give it, I think I gave to the EFF this year because I, I usually I give them my money at DEF CON and there was obviously no live DEF CON to give it to. I think I just wrote them a check there and said, fine, whatever, take my money. Um, but yes, EFF, Wikipedia, uh, things to keep the internet free and open, all that's good stuff. Okay. And we can move on from there. So the the we have a middle story. We have two middle stories. First off, Office 365, or I guess now they call it Microsoft 365. Uh, we, we've, we've before said how awesome this program is. They did something a little shady. I don't know. It's not illegal, but it's really shady. They introduced this admin console, what we call a productivity score. 
And I, I don't know, I don't know in what uh, corporation you're in or you're listening to, but you all know they're trying to find metrics on you on how you're working. Turns out Microsoft did that. They're saying how how much time you're opening your email, how much time you're in Excel and Office. And they have some metrics on this that I guess goes to the IT department and then IT can solve it into whatever they want. And then they can use that with however metric they use to rate you. And it got to, it got a tremendous amount of pushback. Like we were going to talk about it last week to the point that they, Microsoft didn't kill it all the way, but they really dialed it back to say, oh, uh, this may have not been the right time or the right place or whatever it is, especially if you're working from home. So. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see a, a lot of these things uh, probably pop up. Um, like, I, I think, I think, hopefully, hopefully, knock on wood, cross fingers, all that stuff. But hopefully, we're coming out of the other side of this weird tunnel that is the year 2020. Uh, and we might maybe get back to, you know, working in buildings full of people again here soon. Um, but I, I was expecting a whole lot more productivity tracking, frankly. Um, the, the fact that Microsoft put this out, yeah, it's not, not really the best time, read the room, guys. Um, but if you don't think these types of metrics are being used right now, you know, whether, whether built into productivity suites like Office or otherwise, um, you'd be surprised. Um, these types of metrics collection, uh, metric collections happen all the time, uh, especially in companies that have now forced uh, people to work from home. They're looking for anything they can to justify people working from home. They're looking at anything they can to say, yes, people are still productive at home and no, they're not just watching Netflix on their couch. They're doing work, right? Sometimes that's easy, right? So sometimes if you have deliverables or projects or deadlines and stuff comes out in time, well, clearly you're doing the work you're supposed to do, right? Um, but if your job is a little more nebulous, if there's not really artifacts at the end of your process, if you're kind of in the middle there and you don't really have anything to produce or show for your time that's really hard and tangible, it can be difficult for management, especially upper management, to say, do we need all these people and why? Um, and so Microsoft is trying to solve a need for, for that class of people by saying, hey, here's a number. Here's a verifiable number of people in our tools doing work with our systems, doing this stuff. And I understand that argument. The downside to that argument is, man, is that invasive. It is a massive, massive uh, <laughs> privacy violation. That said, you're on company equipment, on company time, do you really have that expectation of privacy? No. Should you? Should we? Probably. I, I think there there is a line there that's not zero, right? Um, you know, you are getting paid by the company, so you should have something to show for it. But you don't want like you don't want them counting the you know three minutes you take to head to the bathroom or grab a cup of coffee or deal with a screaming child. Like, come on, we're we're all just muddling through this year really um i think a little bit more empathy and understanding could go a whole long way look uh <clears throat> i think that that when we when everyone first went home there was a big there was a big i guess rift between the people who were actually getting work done and the people who couldn't handle it i am not i me personally i have to be at work um i am not good at home because i'll find every excuse to not work my saving grace is I literally have to be in front of the camera uh, for four hours a day and I can't leave because I have students there. So I have my team, my team's meeting and I, we do our work. And what I say is, hey, I'm going to hang out here because I have to. You don't have to hang out here. I don't need you pretending to be there so you can leave and uh, and just get your work done. And I'm finding out that people are not getting their work done. But. I mean, I can't force them to be on camera and I can't force them to talk and I can't force them to do a lot of stuff. However, I have to be there. And I'm starting to see myself. We're like three weeks into this for me, at least. And I'm like, oh, if I finish 10 minutes early, I can 
I can make myself more coffee. And then, oh, I can get this one little job done. Or, you know what? I'm going to fold clothes, but I'll keep my headphones on. Or so, and I'm starting to see that time slip. And you know what? Not that I, not that I want to always be watched, but it's, it's to say, hey, you have to remember, hey, we are in company time. They can jump in. They can do this. And maybe it's, maybe it's, they want to know you're on Outlook too much. Maybe it's a positive thing. Maybe they're saying, hey, look, we noticed that you're spending a lot of time on email. Maybe you can be more, I don't think anyone ever says that. Maybe you can do it this way. Maybe you can only answer email a couple times a day. I don't know. I don't think it's going to be a positive thing, but it's one of those things, hey, you have to know that if you're on the company VPN, they can probably see what you're doing. If you're... If you're logging into the company VPN at 10 p.m. at night, they they're probably wanting to know why. But anyway, or or they're probably happy because look at you logging in at 10 p.m. You are efficient, getting stuff done even off of work hours. Good for you. You get a promotion. That's probably not. I, frankly, most VPN logs, unless there's an issue, um, I'm going to speak from my time working in IT. I didn't look at our VPN logs at all unless there was a problem. Like I'm, I'm not tracking when people are logging in or logging out. A, because I don't care. Like that's the main reason. And B, I, I have like an entire list of things I need to get done. Reviewing VPN logs and figuring out who's logging on at odd hours of the morning is not on my to-do list. Not in the least. Um, but yeah, like I, I think it's important that we we admit and recognize that right like we we are professionals we are adults we hold jobs we've held them for a long time i will fully admit yes there are days when it is hard to work from home especially currently the past two weeks i've been working on a, a large project that frankly is kind of dull it's it's got it's got uh, some real benefits and it needs to happen but the work of getting there is droll and dull and, oh, look, I, there's recycling on the counter. I could totally rinse that out. Yeah, I'm just in a meeting, but I'll put in my headphones. And everyone has issues with this, right? It is, it is a near universal occurrence. Um, and I get why Microsoft and other companies want this data. Um, I don't think it's evil. I do think it's misguided. I let's we'll leave it with this because uh, we have ten minutes. I agree that there has to be some sort of tracking. You want to make sure stuff something does get done, especially when we're out for so long. And maybe this is the way to justify. Maybe IT justifies. Hey, we're able to do this. We can downsize our buildings. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but I can see smaller companies instead of having a whole floor now have basically the equivalent of WeWork or some sort of co-working space that's theirs. It's for their people. But you have like a bullpen of desks and say, hey, you can come in and work on these days. Like they're all corner offices or they're all offices, but you can come in and say, but we really don't need half of you. Just get your work done. And maybe we get shorter meetings. Maybe we do. I don't know. I'm, I, I think that I'm lying to myself to think that this will ever happen. Uh, I, my, my company has actually used... Um... I can't say my company, a company that I have worked for in the past. I always say my company when referring to previous jobs, um, but a company I've worked for in the past um, actually used data around the amount of time employees spent in meetings to decrease the amount of meetings we all went to. We're all way more productive at the end because we didn't spend six hours in meetings per day, which was great. Well, I will leave it with this. My, uh, my boss sends out a weekly newsletter email. And we would on Monday discuss it and, and I'd get people that say, oh, I didn't look at it yet. Well, that's your job. Like if you don't want meetings, you have to look at that. And if you're not going to do it, then we're going to have meetings. And then you complain that there's too many meetings that could be sent in an email, but if you don't read the email, so maybe it's checking if you read the email by seeing when you log in, I don't know. Anyway, we're at 22 minutes in, um, our next topic, we're going to try and do this. I don't know how well we're going to do it. We wanted to talk about Section 230. Um, in short, Section 230 is an American law, we have to remember this, on the books that provides some safe harbor to uh, company, social media companies in particular, tech companies, from from getting sued because they're, I don't want to say their feelings are hurt, but for, for enforcing free speech, but obviously with limits. And... And I'm gonna I'm gonna ask Tom if that's a good primer. 
Yeah, so it's it's more for tech companies want to be able to have users generate and post content. Like take YouTube, for example. YouTube's a great example for Section 230, right? Most of the videos on YouTube, they're totally fine. But sometimes a user will take an entire episode of a copyright and TV show, throw it up online, throw up an entire movie on YouTube, and YouTube needs to take that down. Now, before automated systems get to it, let's say that thing is live, people are watching it, and the owner of the TV show reaches out and they try to sue YouTube. Um, now, if YouTube were to keep that up, if they weren't going to take it down in time, if there weren't any controls in place, then yeah, that company has every right to sue YouTube. What Section 230 allows tech companies to do, or any other communications platform, is basically have these safe harbor rules when it comes to user-generated or user-provided content. So if a user does something illegal or you know infringes copyright, it, it gives the uh the platform owner the ability to take that stuff down within a reasonable amount of time in good faith and say hey look we're complying with the law sorry this user did that but we've taken down their content and it's no longer an issue um it's a, a way for youtube to even exist or twitter or facebook or anywhere that allows people to post content online it basically allows them to exist in the state of we are not responsible for what our users post as long as we take down infringing content within a reasonable amount of time, right? It's the law. There's a lot of like wibbly, shaky parts in there. I'm not a lawyer. None of this is legal advice. Um, but it, it does allow companies to have user-generated content without the suppressive fear that something somebody posts on that platform will get them taken off the net. And I'll add to that, that even fa Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Instagram and Snapchat and TikTok, they, they want to be that that open forum. They, they really do. They, they, they want you to have discussions. They want you to have rational discussions. They want you to be safe to each other. They are not in the let's, let's harass people. They don't want to be a part of that. And they, they're aware that it exists, but there's a fine line there between, between what's going on. And this is the Twitter issue. And people on Twitter are saying, Hey, uh, this is going on. How come I'm getting harassed? And while other people can say different things, I'm getting harassed and Twitter takes you seriously and you may not like the result or all that, but it's a big company. Facebook's a big company. YouTube's a big company. <sighs> things like these happen. So yes, you can sue, you can file lawsuits and everything else, but for the most part, I don't see any of them being, you may not like the company, but I don't see any of them being nefarious and saying, oh, we're, we're targeting you or this group of people or anything like that. Section 230, one of the things that people don't talk about, it, mostly it's the safe harbor protection, but uh, one of the um, aspects of this American law uh, is that companies are somewhat protected from taking down content that may be perfectly legal, right? You, you, It might be constitutionally protected speech that a company takes down. Now, that said, there's a couple things we have to explain here. Uh, in America, we've got the First Amendment, it's freedom of speech, which includes like written, broadcast, whatever, right? Um, including internet companies and social media companies. Um, if you take down something that is protected or allowed speech, um, what it, companies don't have to follow this, right? They're private entities and Twitter can say, unless your name starts with the letter Z, you're not allowed to post and we're banning everyone. And they are totally within their rights to do that. It's a private organization and they make the rules for their own platform. Um, but what this allows is uh, Section 230 allows um, some indemnification for these companies when they take down speech that wasn't infringing, but they mistakenly thought it was infringing or taking down speech that's not infringing at all, but that they want to take down. Um, there are some uh, tweets online that have uh, either gotten struck down, banned, removed, or have had fact check uh, blurbs put under them. Section 230 explicitly says this is allowed. Even if Section 230 didn't say that, Twitter is still a private entity, and frankly, they can do whatever they want. Uh, or most of whatever they want. Um, but there are certain members of the U.S. government that do not like Section 230 because it gives 
uh, what they call a sweetheart deal to tech companies. In reality, it just makes it so tech companies can have user provided content. Without Section 230, uh, something like YouTube or Twitter or Facebook would be frankly pretty difficult to pull off uh, because if somebody posts something that you don't like, you could sue the company on behalf of what a user posted, which is a super dangerous place to be in if you're running an internet company. Um, so that's that's kind of why we're bringing it up today and why it's hit the news. It's that some people want to get rid of Section 230 so they can sue tech companies if they do something they don't like. And tech companies clearly want to continue existing, so they need Section 230. I will just leave you with, um, before you argue on whether 230 based on whatever your political leanings are, but in anything, if somebody's, if you're posting something that constantly gets flagged, start asking yourself, just, just ask yourself, is, do I have evidence? Do I, is, do other people also have evidence on this, on whatever it is? I mean, I mean, yes, you, maybe you witness some horrific crime and they're, and everybody is covering it up it's really hard for everybody to cover up. It's very hard for everyone to keep the same lie going. So, and not, and, and people, news reporters, journalists, things like that, they're, they're in the job of telling the truth. They may spin the truth, but they're in the job of eventually telling the truth. So it's hard to, so if somebody's taking you down, they're not taking it, they're not going after you. Maybe I, all I'm asking is look into yourself and uh, and whatever you're watching, say, hey, is this believable? And that goes for everybody. Is this believable? Should I do, let me do my own research with an open mind. Please don't cherry pick sources or whatever. If 99 sources say one thing and one source says the other thing, don't go to that one source and say, you see, ha, ah, they're there. So, so I, so I, I will leave with that. I've been on Twitter for eight years, for forever, since 2008. So we're looking at more than eight years. So, um, and and I've never known Twitter to be like this, like it's a cesspool of a lot of stuff, but they haven't taken too much down. So if they're taking something down, they see something. And if and and if we're, we're in the culture where we have to watch for misinformation, there's a reason for that because there is misinformation. Snopes doesn't have this uh, left-leaning bias that people claim. Uh, they they even debunk that and they go through it. You may not agree with it, but they're saying, here, this is what we have. Facebook, remember, Facebook started in a dorm room to pit to see to uh, for the men to see if the if the other dorm the girls in the dorms were attractive. Remember, that's what Facebook started as. Uh, then they've done some pretty weird things that we've discussed, but they're just people a lot of people just want to show pictures of their kids to their family members that's basically it and if you're on there trying to start a crusade maybe facebook and twitter is not the right answer but i'll leave it with that if uh if you keep getting stuff taken down on social media platforms you know there there are other platforms on the internet that can have you right there's there's a million and one blogging platforms out there and Worse come to worse, it's super easy to host your own content. So if you want a truly free, unencumbered voice on the internet where you own your content, start a blog. Start a blog and host it yourself, and only your hosting provider can take you down at that point. And frankly, most of them aren't really in the business of taking down content that's you know not malware or clearly illegal under their jurisdictions. So if you want to own your content, you can do what I do. And uh, post a blog, right? Jekyll is great. Uh, Octopress is great. Hugo, whatever, man. Like, uh, throw up a throw up a WordPress site. Whatever you want, it's cool. It's great. Uh, you can even ask in our WhatsApp group about self-hosting your content, and I'd be happy to give you some pointers on how to do that. I mean, I you know what I want Twitter for. I want Twitter so I can see what my friends are doing. That's what I want. I really, I know how to find news. I know uh, lots of librarians where I can ask them. On Facebook, I, I'm on Facebook because I want to see what my friends are up to because they won't go on Twitter. So that's all I want. I, I really don't want politics. I really don't want all these fringe ideas. I don't want uh, change a word, change a band with one word or whatever it is. But you take the good with the bad. And so we'll end there. We're over time anyway. So we're going to end and we will see everyone uh, hopefully next week. So bye, everybody. See ya.